Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, um, this presentation has been made by my uh, assistant. You'll see a couple of pictures of myself there. I, I um, He's obviously hoping for a pay rise, uh, um, which he'll not get. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I apologize for that. Um, uh, I've really been looking forward to this, uh, this event. Uh, it started uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, I was in north, the northern part of Norway. I was caught in a blizzard, and they said there was absolutely no chance of getting to Oslo with, uh, before Sunday. Um, uh, so I thought I'd call Henry and said, this I can't do. Um, but I, I decided to go on a, on a, on a bus to Ivalo, four hours drive. And uh, that was uh, quite exciting, although the, um, the Finnish pop music of, uh, of dubious origin for four hours was quite a challenge. Um, but I managed to jump on a plane, the last seat in Ivalo, uh, with a group of Japanese tourists who, for some unbelievable reasons, decided to visit Ivalo at this, part, this time of year. <laughs> um, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, this is actually my first time in, in the center of Helsinki, and it's, uh, it, it impresses me. Um, I'll stick to my manuscripts. I apologize for that, too. Uh, enough apologies. Um, uh, it, it is an honor for me to speak to you um, this forum today and uh, about such an important issue as drug reform. Forums like these are important if we are to change the way we speak and treat drug addiction in Europe. This is life-saving work, and I thank you for your continued efforts. Um, I'm here to speak about Norway's upcoming drug reform and on decriminalization. For many years, Norway has been top 10 on, of, on the list of European overdose numbers. We still are, in fact. Last year, 247 people died from an overdose, although the, uh, though the numbers are dropping now. Uh, we've had a very strict zero-tolerance policy on drugs, with jail time, fines and other various sanctions for drug use. It's been a long and winding road to where we stand today. For 30 years ago, uh, Nixon's war on drugs was the leading ideology in my country. And I must admit, considering my age, that I was one of the foot soldiers in that army. Uh, narcotics made me scared. I saw friends being lost to drugs, good friends who had all the qualifications it took to lead a successful and meaningful life. I myself developed a personal zero-tolerance attitude towards anything other than the most harmful drug there is, alcohol. I still uh, do, as a matter of fact, but not for moral reasons. But I'm less scared now. I have replaced anxiety with anger. I'm angry about the way we treat those unfortunate individuals who for some reason or other become addicts because they cannot stop, stop where others can. Of course, the war on drugs hasn't worked. Quite the opposite. Um, this tweet is from uh, the police in the Norwegian city of Bergen. A man was fined 10,000 Norwegian kroners, about 1,000 euros, for possession of 1.2 grams of cannabis. The man who was fined is, struggling ad is a struggling addict with little to nothing of income. How will criminalization Putting him, uh, and putting him in debt help him or society. This tweet is three years old, and I'll come back to that. This is Knut Rønneid. He is an ex-policeman who quit after his son took his own life. He had admitted to police, the son, that he tried smoking cannabis a time back, and the police res responded with reporting him and taking his driver's license away. Knut's son had for some time struggled with anxiety issues, and this was sad sadly the last, the final straw. Our long and winding road to drugs reform started some 15 years ago when my party had the Minister of Justice, a liberal at heart, 
still very active in our party, now 75 years old. He instructed the police not to persecute people in possession of small amounts of marijuana or hashish. Of course, they still have the legal right to do so, the police, as you saw on the previous slide from, um, from Bergen. But the police was, on the whole, quite happy about the instructions from the minister, for capacity reasons, obviously. They just did not have the manpower enough to hit on 20-year-olds partying in our biggest cities. In 2011, Mr. Thorvald Stoltenberg, previous foreign minister of Norway and father of the present general secretary of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, made history when he led the Stoltenberg Commission on Drugs, leading to a report published in 2012 with widespread political support. His youngest daughter, Nini, had become an addict, a beautiful and intelligent girl working in Norwegian television for various channels. I knew her, actually, until her family discovered her addiction. She died a few years ago. The Stoltenberg report had an enormous impact and even moved the Conservative Party, our present Prime Minister's party, in the National Convention in 2017. This is the basis of our present reform. In the autumn of 2017, I became Member of Parliament, and one of the first decisions I, uh, I became part of was to establish a commission to decriminalize based on the Portuguese model. More on that later. Now, people's lives are affected by the policies we enact. When we change them, we also change people's lives for the better. For many years, my party, Venstre, has worked to change the horrendous practice of striking down on minor drug use. We now believe drug addiction is a disease and must be met with treatment rather than punishment. For my own part, I believe that the sale of drugs should not be criminalized, but regulated, and my party is set on examining which regulation model would fit Norwegian society best. All who struggle with addiction must be offered the right help immediately, instead of fearing jail time. To save lives and ensure people's dignity must also be the basis of a humane drug care. That is what I work for every day in Parliament. Now, my party is a liberal party, and a humane and liberal drug care is based on individual drug addicts and the individual's situation. That's why it's important to focus on the entire breadth of drug care. Prevention, treatment, injury reduction and aftercare. The goal should be to save, to have as many different treatments options as possible, to help as many individuals as possible, each with their own situation. We have tried to change Norway's drugs policy for some for many years in the parliament without success. Again and again, we have been voted down. When we wanted to open up the rules for our injection rooms to help more people, we got voted down. When we wanted to introduce heroin-assisted treatment, we got voted down. When we wanted to treat drugs addiction as a disease and not as a crime, we also got voted down. But in January last year, our party became part of the Norwegian government, along with the Conservative and the Progress Party. And the Norwegian drug reform was born. And with it, many of our proposals that have been voted down are now Norway's official policies. I'd like to quote from the Reform Commission's mandate. The Norwegian government will change our society's response to users of illicit substances to ensure better services for users. In order to facilitate a change, a proposal for transferring the responsibility for society's response from the justice sector to the health services is now under preparation. This is obviously a huge step in the right direction for, for Norway. Our government will pursue a knowledge-based policy on illicit substances, aiming to prevent, reduce and limit the harmful effects of illicit substances use. 
both for people with addiction and dependency problems and those at risk of developing such problems, criminal persecu persecution can consolidate and reinforce the problem. Our go government will therefore help, not punish, those who have or are at risk of developing problems related to illicit substances use. The basis of our reform is that problems related to the use of illicit substances is essentially a health challenge not a criminal offence. For those addicted to illicit substances, punishment and fines are meaningless and may reinforce the problems through further, further marginalisation of individual use. user. As I said, our reform is based on the Portuguese decriminalisation reform. I visited uh, Portugal along with the rest of the health committee last year. It was eye-opening, very much so whereas Norway lost nearly 3,000 lives because of drug overdoses. The numbers in Portugal, twice the population of my country, were 47 at the time. I'm sure that Nunos can, uh, can uh, expand on this later. When I asked the General Secretary of CICAD, the Portuguese Narcotics Directorate, about what had been the most no noticeable effects of the reform, he did not mention numbers. He simply stated that the majority effect was destigmatization. Before we start treating addicts, we simply have to see them as people in, in need of care, not punishment, to see them as patients, not as drunkards and criminals by, joy, by choice. The government has set up a public committee to prepare the implementation of the reform. It has members from the health services, the police, the research sector, and most importantly, two members with lived experiences of drug abuse. Portugal decriminalized all use and possession of illicit substances for personal use in 2001, and reports overall positive effects of the same changes we are now considering in Norway. The committee shall in particular go through the Portuguese model, consider whether this model or part of it, may be adapted to Norwegian context. The committee is expected to deliver their suggestions towards the end of, two th of this year. Now, I must also mention recreational use. After all, recreational users of illicit drugs who have not developed an addiction can be stigmatized by criminal persecution and in a worst-case scenario, fall outside of society by dropping out of work, out of university, out of schools, etc. The criminalization of use and possession of illicit substances for personal use has partly prevented establishing appropriate and customized health and follow-up services. Last August, I had a very productive meeting at the Canadian Embassy in Norway regarding their own drug reform. Norway obviously are, of course, decriminalizing, not regulating, not yet in any case. My party would prefer if we also moved towards regulation, but in all due time. It was interesting to talk to the Canadian ambassador about how a serious G7 nation looks at regulation of illicit drugs and as a health issue to protect the youth. In stark opposition to lots of other politicians and public figures, I might add. The ambassador happily described the quality and variety of Canadian cannabis products. I have never before heard a diplomat talking of good weed. It was a refreshing and unexpected conversation to have with a representative from such a powerful nation. I also later visited Canada just one month before the country legalized the sale of cannabis, and I'm now looking forward to scientific reports on the effect of the reform. Any reform in all sectors of society is, of course, an experiment. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, and I truly hope the taste of the Canadian reform will spread to other countries like mine. One of the main messengers from the upcoming Norwegian reform is that this involves a major shift, a shift in society's understanding of and attitude 
towards substance use related problems and how we as society should cope with the address that uh, how we address this problem that is why we are building injection rooms in our biggest cities Instead of setting, up, uh, setting needles in, on the dirty sidewalk or in a tunnel somewhere in the city, public rooms with nurses and clean needles are set up for use. Last year, we were able to expand the user base for these rooms so that not only heroin addicts can use them, but also users of other injection drugs. This is an important step if we are to save more lives. We will also soon start doing tests with heroin-assisted treatment for the few who can't handle other treatments. This is something we proposed 10 years ago. We were nearly laughed at back then. Today, it is an official policy of Norwegian government, which is, I repeat, led by a conservative prime minister. What we do in this auditorium today helps people. It helps to talk about and discuss drug reform. It helps to push the conversation towards forward. Because we are moving forward, it just takes time. Mm. To save lives and ensure dignity must also be the foundation for a humane approach to the substance use related issues. Priority should be given to the most effective measures. The government wants to change the authorities' reaction to persons arrested for use and possession of illicit substances for personal use, from punishment to help, treatment and follow-up. Make no mistake, once the reform is being set in motion, it is going to cost us, us a lot of money. We have to set up treatment facilities, we have to educate medical personnel, we have to convince the police that uh, what we are doing is the right thing. And we have to initiate, initiate a long campaign to destigmatize the view on addicts in our society. We simply have to teach people how to behave, behave humanely. And I'm, part, and I'm really proud to be part of this clean break with the old regime. Thank you. Could I just expand on one problem that you mentioned just recently, uh, the, the question of naloxone? We have had this for some time in, in Norway. It has not worked as well as we expected to. Uh, and this is, of course, because people injecting mainly do so in their homes with nobody else with them. Uh, but uh, we have had naloxone, you can get naloxone in those inje injection rooms and we have had good experiences on the streets, but not as, uh, as um, extensively as we expected, really. But we are still continuing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe you can keep the mic, if okay. it's okay. Yeah. So. Okay, seuraavaksi uh, suomalainen huumepolitiikka vaikuttaja Elina Kotovirta. Neuvotteleva virkamies sosiaali- ja terveysministeriöstä ottaa vähän näkymään tähän, että miten täällä Suomessa tämä homma toimii. Ja sitten varmaan sitten vertaillaan vähän tähän Norjaankin tämän sun puheenvuoron jälkeen. Uh, first for you, it sounded a little bit depressing, the situation about the resources you have to use for this thing. So it doesn't sound like anything is going to happen uh, in with the next government, for example, if you don't have any uh, governmental offices who are working on this subject, and even the mental health issues are done as a side work, that includes also the, mm. um, the, these, these fields, drugs and alcohol. Yes, I, I don't know if you have heard from the media that there is way too many civil servants, and they are lazy, <laughs> and they don't do anything. So let's diminish amount of them. Let's take money from the THL, the National Institute, because they don't do anything, you know, they are just slacking there. Nothing is happening. So unfortunately, this kind of political speech is, is, is affecting, of course, all of, the, <laughs> all of the fields, not just drug field. Uh, so, so that way, but of course, we must think that we, we must be flexible and agile and, you know, uh, take the resources, maybe there's, now with something else and then we take them to something else at some point. But this is how it's going. The government is going more and more that we need to be experts on many fields and, and, and we are not 
well, allowed is maybe the wrong word, but, but kind of, you know, I would have to go for the mental health or I would have to go for the government funding things or something else, you know, whenever said, because we are all very flexible and agile. So that way I'm not, I'm not holding my breath for more resources. Or maybe there are new politicians who really want to give government more resources. And for example, increase THL's funding. That would be wonderful. Yeah, we, 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 we'll be having the, the, the politi politician panel yes. <laughs> today. And maybe, because there's like lots of populism yeah. in this subject and mm -hmm. lots of ignorance. Mm -hmm. And maybe, how, how did you deal with the ignorance? Because it's not like the most uh, popular thing to, to start advocating drug policy if you can, you know, save the children. <laughs> or uh, elderly people or, uh, or uh, anything like that. So how did you get this in the focus I th that you I were th able to do a reform? <clears throat> I, mean, I, in I, Norway? I think there was uh, the number of uh, overdose deaths that triggered uh, uh, the situation because they were up to close to 300 in a very small country. Yeah. And that really is a disaster. Mm. And it's the same thing is happening in Finland, actually, at the moment, as we saw yeah, from Pekka's it's, numbers. It's, it's rising, and it's rising in Sweden, too, yeah. um, because of, uh, as an effect of mm. the same policy. Mm. Okay, from Slido, there's lots of questions now, because this seems to, you know, put people uh, online. What could Finland learn from difficulties and, and the process of the Norwegian uh, reform? What, what do you think? Well, a lot, of course, like <laughs> always, and of course, it's 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 uh, it's stupid to complain about money. It's it's really some sometimes a really stupid thing. Of course, I mean, I would hope more resources and such, but of course, like uh, uh, advocating uh, discussions and and taking politicians on board and and these kind of things. Of course, there are there are plenty plenty of things, and and like I said, also the. Like, like how, how you should uh, take many measures on board, like you should have this wide scope of different measures. And actually, just like a small detail, I think what, what they've done in Norway is that, for example, the drug consumption rooms, they were first an experiment. It was an experimental law, and then it was like, you know, uh, solidified as a, you now it's not anymore an experimental law. So this is kind of thing that we are not so uh, usually doing in Finland. We usually do a law and that's like forever. But maybe we would need this kind of thinking that, okay, we can make a law for five years or three years. I, I don't know what would be the proper timeline, but this probably could be one thing. Hmm. What are your main uh, tips how to do a reform <laughs> <laughs> in Finland? No, I, like I, I, in three words, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to start with justice, of course, uh, mm -hmm. the judicial process. I think it's going to come to, as a surprise mm -hmm. to Norwegians how much this is going to cost us. Mm -hmm. We have these treatment centers, but they are very uh, uh, different centers. Some are Christians, uh, quite a few actually are Christians, and they have to adopt to a whole new process, not to just detoxify and then pe put people mm -hmm. back on the street. So they have to adjust to to this as a, a psychological issue. And, and uh, so I'm happy to hear you talking about psychology in, in the same way uh, as, uh, as we think. It's, uh, this is a whole, mm. it's a complicated issue. Uh, it's going to come as a surprise how much this is mm. going to cost. Really, really. Uh, mm. um, but, um, but Norway is a rich country, yeah. you know. Yeah. We and that's, that's, that's yeah. why we yeah. envy you. Yeah. That's why we envy you. Yeah. You, you have all the money, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you actually, can take care of all the yeah. people. This is what we heard already from Portugal also, that at that time they had all, they, they really, the resources, I mean, if, when you do this kind of reform, you really need to put, put the money well, also in it. You just yeah. have to afford it. Exactly, but, but also yeah. not, and, and if there wouldn't be anything else, for example, except the, I mentioned in my speech, the, the reform of our, our treatment and mental health care law, like addiction treatment and mental health care law, even that would need a, you know, proper resourcing, but also like new kind of thinking, which is already inside the law proposition so far that has been made, is kind of all, all like new kind of thinking also in the law. Uh, laws, new laws and reforms are, are first created with the public, public debate yes. and, and awareness. And it was like, maybe quite a big task in Norway to get this drug policy 
in the people's minds. So how did you do? People have been asking how did you how how did you make it as a big thing for every Norwegian? Well, I, I think it's you know it's it's a, a matter of starting on the very individual aspect of it. So, uh, like, like like I was talking about the and the, turning the, people's the, the, minds into favorable yeah, yeah, for you, the reform. You, you, and and people really coming up front and and uh, and uh, stating their problems and. Uh, of course, we see drug abuse on the streets of Oslo, and people. Uh, we can, we can um, arrest people. We can put them in jail. We can, but they. It's never going to stop, uh, and and uh, it's it's spreading, and people see this, and we have to do something about it, and it's also a question of public safety, of course. Um, so. People walking with uh, with their children through those streets in Oslo, where the where the drug abuse is at, at its worst. Uh, I mean, things like that happen, and uh, and people react to it, of course. And it's also a question of I mean, leading politicians taking taking a stand. So when the the sister of the general secretary in NATO died, that creates an impact, and she was a very prominent person. Uh, in 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 um, in this field in Norway before before she died. So there's a question for you that has got lots of votes. How realistic it is that uh, uh, the cannabis will be decriminalized in Finland, and how long time it will take? <laughs> Who said that nothing is harder than predicting the fu uh, predicting except predicting the future? <laughs> <clears throat> that is a, a very interesting question. Of course, we, we see uh, it was one of our uh, like tabloid newspapers that actually made the, the gallop with the, with the political parties. And no, but no one of uh, them except one seemed to be in favor even of decriminalizing. So I wouldn't hold my breath for the next governmental period. But like in many policies we've seen also abroad, uh, some of the changes might be really, really fast. So they just might happen, you know. So, so that way I, I really don't like predicting. Uh, what I would pre predict is that, that uh, when it happens, uh, I'm totally amazed that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it happened already! <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it might be uh, because we live in the world of stories, and that's mm. a sad story that you had. Yeah. Like, uh, so, so it might change people's minds, and, and, and when mm. people's minds change, then the politicians' mm. minds. Yeah. They focus on that. And we are going to hear stories here. Mm. <laughs> and that is, that is going to change people's minds, I'm sure. Uh, to Elina, what can we do to encourage Finnish politicians and official, officials to actually look into what Norway, Norway is doing in order to Finland to learn from them? Well, uh, of course, all kind of advocacy and activism is, is very good. And of course, now in this afternoon, you will have the political panel. So I think that's also a good start. And, and my like, general advice on any subject has been that uh, try to <coughs> uh, choose one thing, what you want to say, and write the one thing for the politician. I don't know if you agree with me, but, but if, if, I mean, uh, short messages, because that's somehow the problem of advocacy is that I want to say this all, and then you dump like a huge load of papers to somebody's email, mm -hmm. and that won't be read. So, so this way, I, I'm like, even if you wanted to say so much things, would be like choose one, and 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 try to make it like as concrete and as as short as possible, and and then then it's easier to to also get people on board when when they have like a, a thing in a package that they can digest. And I I now mean people who don't have any investment in the drug policy at the moment. I mean, of course, those who already have, they are willing to take more, but if you're thinking of changing minds of someone who just doesn't care about drug policy, I mean, not bad, not good, but just doesn't, you know, this is not my, so, so then, you know, maybe trying to get one angle or one thing that would, you know, interest this person and, uh, and try to make it as concrete and short. <laughs> Were well, you like the evangelist <laughs> in in Nor Norwegian po political system to to get people to know? Because you you need like persons. Yes, um, 
But I'm, um, if I'm not in a position to, to advise you of it, yeah. on, on anything, but I, I think it's quite important to state that, uh, first of all, it's not a question of legalization. Mm. Exactly, yeah. It's not, mm. you, you, we're not going to sell cannabis on the streets of Helsinki. If you, um, if you adjust to that uh, and, and tell people, we are here to, <coughs> to deal with this as a health mm. problem, not a recreational mm. problem. That's very important. Take one step at a time. I believe that legalization is, is, uh, is the, uh, the next step. It's uh, uh, um, more or less, it comes by itself after a while, but one step at a time. This mm -hmm. is decriminalization because it's absolutely hopeless to criminalize people with 1.2 grams of hashish on them going out, out on the streets. People, people, <laughs> people tend to take drugs even if politicians say they shouldn't. That's a major problem for us. <laughs> they do many things that, that yeah. you say or we say they shouldn't. People so. tend to copulate if, even if we don't say they shouldn't. <laughs> 15 year olds, <laughs> they shouldn't, but they still do. I mean, why, why is this so important? Why is this so, so, so um, um, difficult to understand for politicians? We just had the new numbers from uh, DHL that one fourth of the Finns are in some way criminals. And, and do the politicians really know that it's, it's so common? Are they living in a bubble or <laughs> what, what, what do you think? Um, I think generally politicians like, I mean, it's, it's not the thing that they don't care. I mean, it's not a negative or positive. It's just not in their world. They have some other things, like now the elderly care is, is the thing. In, you have to, uh, we have this elderly care crisis. I don't know if you've heard, but you know, this, you know so, so also this way kind of... Um, uh, giving some mercy also for the politicians, that there are a wide range of things and not just that somebody is, is not paying attention to this thing doesn't mean that he or she doesn't care. It just means that has some, some other focus on it. So again, advocacy and, 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 and taking these things up is important. But that's why I, well, also my position, I'm not to, in a position to blame politicians. I'm really glad that people volunteer <laughs> for these kind of jobs because it's, it's not an easy job. Whatever you do, you are wrong. <laughs> Somebody's opinion. Uh, yeah. What's easy for me is that now I have the majority behind me. Exactly. Now, yeah. Uh, so, mm. yeah. so I come mm. at a, oh. at a, dressed up at a dinner party, yeah. really. <laughs> uh, one, 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 one question uh, from Slido is that uh, based on your, uh, I think, uh, so, social and uh, health ministry of Finland. Yeah. Uh, two thirds of the people who would benefit from from the services given to the um, uh, users are not getting them. What does it say about about this situation? Like two thirds are not getting help that they should ha get. Uh, now I don't know which resource is know. referring or, or something, yeah. or is it is it like? Harm reduction services, or is it treatment services, or is it, uh, is it uh, uh, substitution treatment services? Now, unfortunately, I don't know, but like generally, uh, uh, again, it's a, it's a bad excuse to blame everything on our social and health care reform, but it's actually the vortex that it's sucking out all energy from the... I shouldn't say this, by the way, this is <coughs> going to the video. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, it's, it's, it's taking huge amount of resources and also, of course, uh, 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 even if we do have the laws and, and we do have, for example, the care guarantee that you were supposed to get to care in during the certain kind of time. But at the moment when we are a little bit in this limbo that uh, municipalities still have the responsibility, but we don't know whether they have it in the future and whether we go to this regional model. So at the moment, it's been kind of hard for even the ministry to say to the municipalities that do this or do that, or because we don't know if the thing will change in a year. So I admit that this has been a real problem, as a, as a structural, organizational problem also, that uh, even if I also said that our law isn't necessarily up to date at the moment with the care, but also, also that, that the system at the moment is not 
what, what word would I use, a stable as, or, or, or that way organized that we could actually you know, demand from municipalities certain things or such. So, so this way we are, this limbo is also affecting, unfortunately, also addiction services. And of course, we are not happy about it. One more thing. Uh, what's the next big thing we need to do in Finland to, to go towards a better world in this, in this <laughs> matter? I think you should go to Portugal. I'm sure you do. <laughs> because when I, met, when I met him in Portugal, so, I mean, that, that was really eye-opening. And I'm looking very much forward to hearing you tomorrow. To, to, or today. Today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, it's, um, it's a great experience. Uh, um, because the, Portugal had such a historical background that's amazing uh, to, the, the, to the issue. And, and they really managed to do something about this. But it, what is also important is to hear you talking about addiction on the whole. Because <laughs> when you tell me that, that gambling is actually financing yes. <laughs> the, the struggle against drugs, exactly. it's, it's, really, it's really a paradox. It is. <laughs> we know this also. But, but ask the NGOs here whether they want to dismantle our gambling funding. Do you want to? Who wants to dismantle? <laughs> the one. Good. Okay. The other. But otherwise, you know, most of even this but even this seminar is funded with the gambling money. Okay, so but people tend to gamble <laughs> even if politicians say yes. they shouldn't. <laughs> so, so I know, but this is known problem. But anyway, I mean, uh, uh, you should give this advice, of course, to the politicians. I mean, I'm not the politician. Uh, we are civil servants, of course, been following. Uh, I, I'm in a lucky situation of meeting even Portuguese colleagues, even only yesterday again. Yeah. So, so for me, I mean, I, I go to Portugal twice a year, so for me this is no news. But mm -hmm. of course, the Finnish, po and Finnish politicians have been to Portugal uh, at some point also visiting. I know some delegations have been there. Yeah. But, but this is of course the advice to give to the Finnish politicians. I, I think I'm quite well educated of the different models of the Europe just because of yeah. my work. But, but you'll be surprised to hear the number of Norwegians who have been to Portugal. Yeah. I mean, the whole yeah. <laughs> my, my, my yeah. committee was there, and, and the exactly. whole Ministry of, uh, of Health, uh, I think, was, has been there, and, and all, the, all the NGOs. And I think yeah. we, we've developed <laughs> very yeah. good links with, with Portugal. And we've, we are really following the, 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 the statistics very yeah. closely. Because it's still an experiment, really, isn't it? Mm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we I are gladly taking your oil money over our, <laughs> our gambling yes. money. Uh, well, maybe, so maybe you can send us some money so we can make <laughs> exactly. a trip, trip to Portugal for the politicians so, and uh, tell yeah. them how beautiful the country is. I'll, and, yeah. uh, I'll pass it on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.